This is Passover number 3,475 since the original one. What's different about this Passover from all the rest of them? This is David Tal, this is the Balagan Connection, and today we're going to be talking about Passovers. Okay, uh, all the Jews in the world are going to be celebrating Passover this weekend. So, um, the original Passover, that's when the uh, children of Israel left Egypt, which, by the way, was the superpower at the time. Remember that, that was the world superpower. Uh, let's talk about our Passover from last week, where almost 500 rockets were sent towards Israel, were shot at Israel, 500 rockets and drones, and they all passed over. Well, they didn't really pass over, but they kind of got stuck on the way. Let's talk about a Passover from a couple of days ago, where a couple of rockets were fired at a couple of facilities in Iran. Those ones definitely did not pass over. We'll talk about that. And I just want to connect all of this to the real Passover connection, and that is the Passover lamb that we celebrate every day in our life. We celebrate every communion, and that is Jesus Christ actually being our Passover lamb and saving us from the angel of death. But I want to start this off with a chapter that kind of has been sitting on my mind and something that we have a connection to. And, and I'm going to connect this to a saying that the all Jews would say in Hebrew, Avarnu et paro na gamenze, which basically means this, we overcame Pharaoh and we can overcome this. And we've been saying that for thousands of years. If you have a Bible, let's go to Exodus chapter 10, verse 1. And it says this. Now the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. And the hearts of all of his servants and all of his advisors and all of his PR people and everybody around them, that I may show these signs of mine before him. And that you may tell in the hearing of your son and your son's son and your son's son's son down to the years, the mighty things that I have done in Egypt, my signs which I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. Passover is one of the few celebrations that we as Jews are, are actually commanded to tell our sons about and our sons to tell our sons. It is the story of who we are and what we are, and it's supposed to be passed down from generation to generation. And why am I not surprised that every generation has its Passover? And let's talk about some of the Passovers that we've dealt with. The first one we saw, we talked about uh, in the last clip, is about Iran firing almost 500 drones, missiles, and everything at Israel. We've gone in a little bit deeper, so if you want to go back to that clip, kind of go into that. But one of the things I want to stress that we know today are a few things. First of all, Israel's air defense system worked like a charm. I mean, the different layers, the arrow system, the, the sling of David, the, the Iron Dome, all together with the Air Force itself, managed to put a dome over all of this country and, and to save us from the evil that was, was planned for us. Uh, We've also realized that a lot more work was done in this whole event by the United States, UK, British, and, and French, but also by the Jordanian and the uh, Saudi Air Force, which means there's a coming together, a de facto, and people are calling it another NATO, a, middle, a kind of a Middle East NATO that is coming together uh, to, to stand against the evil of Iran and, and everything that, that they're planning. Then, a couple days ago, we don't know how many, but a couple of rockets were fired at a very specific target in Iran, and they did, definitely did not pass over Iran. Not only did they not pass over, they impacted and blew up their intended targets. And let's see what we know about what happened and, and why. So, so after Iran fired all those rockets, everybody knew that Israel had to retaliate. But the whole question was, how does Israel retaliate? And, and one of the things that we thought about, if we retaliate too much, it'll start off a regional war. Nobody wants a regional war. Nobody, including your president, uh, Biden, in the United States. Uh, so, so the question is, how is Israel going to retaliate? And then 
A uh, facility blew up in Iran. Now, it wasn't a nuclear facility, but it was very close to a nuclear facility. And specifically, very interesting that what blew up was an anti-aircraft system. Actually, the radar system of one of the most sophisticated anti-aircraft systems that the Iranians have. It didn't make a lot of damage, not a lot of people were killed, but what it did do is send a very concrete, very specific message to the Iranians that if we can take out your anti-aircraft systems, that means we can take out everything that we want and we will have full air superiority over Iran if we want to. And that freaked the Iranians out. Very wisely, though, Israel did not yell from the rooftops that we did it. A lot of people are saying that we did it. Most people think that we did. But that means we have completely, completely gone into uh, Iranian airspace uh, and completely, completely have free reign over what we want to do there. And that was a way to say to Iran, this is something that we have to be careful. This is something we've done. And, and I think wisely, Israel has managed to do that without dismantling this newly formed coalition, both with the United States and the European powers against Iran, but also with Jordan and Saudi Arabia that see Iran as a bigger threat than ever before. Um, which brings me to something else, and this is something that I think we need to talk about and I think we need to understand, and I don't know if anybody else is talking about it. I think I'm a little bit different in the way I see this. Keep on, everybody keeps on asking me, uh, when is Iran going to get into the war? Is Iran going to get into the war? Is the Hezbollah, which is an Iranian proxy, going to get into the war? Uh, Hamas, I mean, and, and everything else. And what I keep on feeling more than anything is that the fact that Iran pulled off an attack that was, uh, how do you say, it, it was a, uh, look what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a street fight when somebody kind of uh, says, I'm going to beat you up, and then he says to his friend, hold me back so I don't beat you up. Iran pulled off a strike, but it wasn't really intended to go anywhere. They're not wanting to start an all-off confrontation with Israel. They haven't used all of the abilities that we know that Hezbollah in the north has to start off an all-off confrontation with Israel. Uh, and what I think is happening, the more time goes by before this confrontation breaks out, Iran doesn't want a confrontation with Israel right now. They can't do it. And, and when we saw what their missiles are capable of and, and not capable of, I think we realize now more than ever that they are kind of holding back until something else happens. People keep on, that, keep on asking me what else needs to happen. I think Iran is still thinking, hoping, planning to get a nuclear option together. If they had one, they would have used it. And what I'm trying to say is this. Even on a political, geopolitical, military, technological, uh, diplomatic complexity of what's going on, there still is God looking out for Israel, God putting a dome over Israel, God marking off his people, and and. As far as what's happened now, and again, uh, the, the 7th of October was a terrible attack, but basically what we're seeing now is that most of the evil right now is passing over Israel in, in weird ways. And I know it sounds weird to say it like that, but I think looking at it today that, that I can see the hand of God in, in helping Israel overcome all of these different threats that are coming from different directions. And as of now, um, not really s impacting Israel the way we thought it would and is giving us the freedom to, to do what we have to do, including what's going to happen in Gaza, I think, sometime in the soon, uh, soon, because I think that what happened with Iran, I think Iran made a mistake on this one, is going to allow Israel to finish off with less condemnation from the world powers uh, to finish off Hamas in Gaza. Which brings us to what's going on right now. Israel has to finish off Hamas in Gaza. That's the evil that has to be outrooted. That is, that is the, the, the atrocity that has to be taken care of. The only thing that would stop Israel right now 
would be the United States of America and, and large pressure from, from the European powers. And the only thing that would cause the United States of America to pull out all the stops on Israel right now is the impact of your woke left and I don't know how the Muslim world became connected to the woke world, and they've become a power uh, party, actually putting pressure on the American government to throw Israel under the bus. Um, we have to make sure that doesn't happen. And again, from this platform, again and again, I've been saying the same thing. Uh, we need your support. We need your, your political support, we need your financial support, but we need your support also on the spiritual realm that, that this will be uh, continued, to, that God will continue to, to, to make sure that the angel, the evil angel passes over God's chosen people. Which brings us to what we're celebrating here this weekend because on a more spiritual level, the angel of death was sitting on top of all of us. And it was God who sent his own son to be the Passover sacrifice whose blood was on the doorpost marking off what God called his from what was not his and pushing away the angel of death. It was God's own son who became the Passover lamb for all of us. I want you all to remember that and, and remember that when you think about Jesus and, and when you have communion, basically, you are celebrating that original Passover that happened 3,475 years ago. And this is why I love what I do. This was a Passover Balagan connection between all the different ones. Please pray for us. Celebrate Passover. If you have a Jewish friend, this is a time to reach out and say happy Passover. And I've said to Christian friends before, a good way to connect Jews to the story of Jesus is what we just now did. Jesus is a Passover lamb. Passover is something that all Jews understand, celebrate, and recognize. They pass it over, pass it down to their son year after year. The disciples, when they sat with Jesus at the Last Supper, were actually celebrating that original Passover all those years ago. So when you talk to a Jew and you want to talk to a Jew about Israel, use the Passover story, the Passover lamb, the Passover sacrifice, the blood of the lamb that saved us from death as a way to, to connect to your Jewish friends. So if you like this, uh, do me a favor. Um, please like, share, subscribe, uh, send this out to other people. Uh, there's a link underneath here to Gijon Springs, which is a ministry that I'm connected to, and, and we support believing ministries in Israel. So, so if you want to do that, uh, you can do that. Uh, through the Gijon Springs, you can specifically support me, my wife. We're heading back to Israel, and I will start putting up uh, content on that connection. And uh, this is the Balagan Connection. Hope to see you soon.